Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Last time when we left off we had just finished exploring the Upper City Apartments, fought some Sith, gained a level, got to know Karth better, and picked up a side quest, Dia's Bounty. We are now out in the Upper City South, ready to explore. Let's get after it. So these random citizens we don't actually really need to talk to. Salvage droid. The salvage droids are busy scanning and scavenging the remains of this Republic escape pod. Presumably that's the one Karth and I got out of. Kebla's shop. Equipment Emporium. Okay, go ahead and go in here. Kepla Yurt. Big lag, sorry about that. Shop droid. This droid is too busy performing its assigned duties to speak with you. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to Kepla Yurt. Hello there. I haven't seen you in my shop before. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kepla Yurt. Welcome to the Equipment Emporium. You looking to buy some supplies? My shop's the largest one in all of Upper Terrace. Best selection on the planet. Whatever you need, I've got. Well, mostly. Mostly? What do you mean by that? The Sith confiscated all my heavy weapons and they impounded all my ships and swoop bikes. But I've still got a real nice selection, if you're interested. I want to ask you some questions. Anything I can do to help a potential customer out. What do you want to know? <clears throat> Do you know anything about those escape pods that crashed here on Terrace? I heard a couple of pods crash down in the Undercity. I bet the crash sites have already been stripped clean by the Sith, though. Unless the Swoop Gangs or Davix men got there first. Swoop Gangs? What can you tell me about them? I don't have anything good to say about those Swoop Gangs. Zooming around on their Swoop bikes, terrorizing the lower city like a bunch of animals. Things weren't so bad when the hidden Bex was running the show. But ever since the rise of the Black Volker Gang, <laughs> the Lower City has been nothing short of a war zone. The Sith haven't even bothered trying to maintain order down there. And I heard a rumor that Davik's own people are having problems with the Black Volkers now. What do you know about Davik? Oh, Davik's a legitimate businessman, if you get my drift. Smuggling, slaving, extortion. They say he's a member of the Exchange, you know, the big intergalactic criminal organization. I've heard of the Exchange. Bad organization to cross. But if anyone has blockade breaking ships, however, it's them. I have to pay them a protection fee every month, but it's reasonable. And I get most of my inventory through Davik and his suppliers. I'm just smart enough not to ask where it came from, you understand? Davik's nothing but a petty crime lord. Is Davik working with the Sith? Let's be less naive. Davik hates the Sith as much as anybody. The quarantine has put a real thing in his operations, too. But he's keeping a low profile as long as the occupation lasts. <laughs> Davik stays out of the way, and the Sith don't bother him. The Swoop Gangs could learn a thing or two from this tidy little arrangement, instead of always going after each other. Let's see, I was wondering how you feel about Sith. Uh, it's not smart to say bad things about the people in power, if you get my meaning. I just wish the Sith would ease up on the quarantine. They're killing my business. I can't say I like having them here in Upper City, but it could be worse, and we're still a lot better off than the Lower City, what with those swoop gangs and all. I need some general information on Terrace. Oh, you're one of those off-worlders, aren't you? Come to Terrace for a short business trip and end up stuck here because of the Sith quarantine, right? Oh, you can't be too happy. Trapped on an unfamiliar world and all. But Terrace isn't so bad, as long as you stay in the upper city. Just try to avoid the Sith. And stay out of the lower city. The Swoop gangs are totally out of control. Even Davik's men are having trouble down there. I'll be going now. Good day to you, then. Uh, remember to come back to my shop if you ever need any supplies. All right, I would like to buy some. Welcome to the Equipment Emporium. Find a selection of supplies in all of Terrace. You interested in seeing what I have in stock? Let me see what you've got for sale. Uh, just so you know, the prices on the items are final. 
No bargaining here. This isn't a swap meet, okay? I only deal in top-notch stuff. Okay, so what does she have that I haven't seen before? A security spike. This one use item improves the user's ability to bypass security measures, creating electronic interference in the locking mechanisms of doors and containers. A Bonadan alloy heavy suit. Feats required armor proficiency light. It costs 900 credits. I only have 228. Defense bonus 6, max dexterity bonus plus 4. Bonadan is an emerging industrial society financing their exploration of the galaxy through production of small arms and armor. They favor heavy materials offering solid defense. Military suit. Feats required armor proficiency medium. 150 credits. Defense bonus 6, max dexterity bonus plus 3. This standard issue suit provides good protection, but can be heavier and more restrictive than some of its counterparts. Even so, many mercenaries swear the trade-offs are worth it. This reminds me, I actually forgot to look through Lareem's inventory, so we'll uh, transit back and do that after we're done here. Heavy combat suit. Feats required armor proficiency light, defense bonus 5, max dexterity bonus plus 4. This version of the combat suit offers more protection than the basic model. It is heavier overall and not quite as flexible, but many consider the trade-offs worthwhile. We've seen a combat suit, light battle armor. Feats required armor proficiency medium, defense bonus 7, max dexterity bonus plus 2. Providing solid protection for a minimal cost, this armor is excellent for entrenched troops or guards. A force on the move, however, may find it somewhat constricting. We've seen a vibroblade. Stun baton. Feats required weapon proficiency, melee weapons, damage, physical, 1 to 1. Critical threat, 20, 20 times 2 on hit. Stun, 25% chance, 6 seconds, DC 10. A common weapon, stun batons do minimal damage, but can incapacitate a target. The high-density cells needed for repeated discharge are unwieldy, making it unusable in the offhand. Long sword we've seen. Quarterstaff. Feats required, weapon proficiency, melee weapons, damage, physical 1 to 6, critical threat 20, 20 times 2. Usually just a smooth staff of wood or light alloys, this is a very simple weapon of ancient design. Ichani Ritual Brand. Feats required, weapon proficiency, melee weapons, damage, physical 3 to 13, critical threat 20, 20 times 2, attack modifier plus 1. Ichani Fire Dancers use the double-bladed Ritual Brand in a dodging and slicing pattern, so graceful it looks more like a dance than combat. Vibro Sword. Feats required. Weapon Proficiency Melee Weapons. Damage Physical, 2 to 12. Critical Threat, 19 to 20 times 2. Ultrasonic Generators power this Ichani-developed weapon design. A rare cortosis weave that protects against sparring damage ensures that traditional swordplay will endure in the time of lightsabers. Double-bladed sword. Feats required weapon proficiency, melee weapons, damage physical 2 to 12, critical threat 20 20 times 2. A difficult weapon to master, the double-bladed sword has a grip in the center with two long blades emerging from either end. The double-bladed sword is capable of inflicting more damage, but is also less precise than the single-bladed variant. Short sword we've seen, ion blaster, blaster pistol, Sith sniper rifle is new. Feats required weapon proficiency blaster rifle, damage energy 2 to 9, range 28 meters, critical threat 19 to 20 times 2, attack modifier plus 1. Despite its effectiveness, these modified blaster rifles are not often employed by the Sith. They prefer to engage their enemies up close and personal. A blaster rifle we've seen, but an ion grenade is new. Damage, Ion, 15 points, 45 points versus droids. Area of effect, 4 meters, range long, save, DC 15 for half damage. These grenades emit an extremely strong burst of energy, devastating to any droids or personal shields caught in the effect. Sonic Grenade is new. Damage, Sonic, 20 points, secondary, minus 6 dexterity for 30 seconds, area of effect, 4 meters, range long, save, DC 15 for half damage and negates dexterity penalty. These grenades explode loudly, but the majority of their effect is delivered in disorienting frequencies the ear can barely perceive, even as it is damaged. We've seen frag grenades. Concussion grenade is new. Damage, none. Secondary, stun for 9 seconds, area of effect 4 meters, range long, save, DC 15 for no effect. This type of grenade explodes in a concussive wave of force that disrupts the senses of both organic and inorganic targets in the area of effect. Sound dampening stealth unit. Skills, Stealth plus 2. 
This Republic unit improves on the basic stealth mode field by dampening all sound that the user might make. Opponents must make an awareness check versus user stealth skill plus two or remain unaware of them. The user must have paid points into the stealth skill to gain the use of stealth mode. Combat disrupts the field, but mundane tasks do not. Stealth field generator. This device enables stealth mode, a camouflage field that hides the user. Opponents must make an awareness check versus the stealth skill of the user or remain unaware of them. The user must have paid points into the stealth skill to use stealth mode. Combat disrupts the field, but mundane tasks do not. Minor flash mine. Damage none. Secondary. Stun for 9 seconds. Area of effect 3.3 meter radius. Save. DC 15 to negate stun. Carefully set flash mines can stun any enemies unfortunate enough to step on them. This is the basic model. Minor gas mine. Damage special. Secondary. Poison. 3 points every 3 seconds. Duration 30 seconds. Area of effect 3.3 meter radius. Save. DC 15 for no effect. When stepped on, gas mines saturate the immediate area with poisonous gas. This is the basic model. Minor frag mine. Damage piercing 18 points. Area of effect 3.3 meter radius. Save. DC 15 for half damage. Frag mines send blasts of shrapnel through any nearby enemies. This is the basic model. Minor plasma mine. Damage heat 24 points. Area of effect 3.3 meter radius. Save. DC 15 for half damage. When stepped on, plasma mines emit a short burst of intense heat, searing all enemies nearby. This is the basic model. Permacrete Detonator. Costs 50 credits and we actually need it as a quest item. This powerful detonator is extremely complicated. Only someone trained in its use could set and activate it. I will buy the Permacrete Detonator. And... That's gonna do it, I think. Oh yeah, I don't need anything else. Not now, anyway. So before I forget, let me transit back just to have a gander at Lareem. His inventory specifically. Because I forgot to look through it. That's my mistake. Remains. What did I miss? A repair kit. Hot damn. Back again, so what can I do for you? You want to see what I have in stock? Let me see what you've got for sale. No problem, just step on up and have a pee. Alright, med pack. Ion blaster, I've seen that. Sonic pistol, now that's new. Feats required, weapon proficiency blaster pistol, damage, sonic, 1 to 4, range, 17 meters, Critical threat, 20 to 20 times 2, 20 20 times 2. On hit, attribute damage, dexterity, DC 14. Balance, plus 2 plus 0 versus 2 weapon penalty if used in the offhand. Sometimes referred to as squealers, these weapons deliver a high frequency jolt to the senses that can potentially, that can damage and potentially disorient an opponent. Uh, light repeating blaster is new. Feats required, heavy weapon proficiency, heavy weapons, damage, energy 1 to 8, range 28 meters, critical threat 20, 20 times 2. This weapon allows the user to fire more quickly than usual, increasing his chances of survival without drastically changing the amount of equipment he would normally carry. We've seen those now. Energy shield is new. Uses 5 of 5, deflection, energy, electrical, 20 points, duration, 200 seconds or max damage taken. Charges. Using this item consumes one charge. This item is automatically discarded after all available charges are consumed. Items that have charges do not stack in inventory. When equipped and activated, these items project an energy shield around the wearer. The small power source can burn out when repeatedly stressed, requiring replacement of the entire unit. Battle Stimulant. Single use. Bonus. Vitality max plus 8 points, attack plus 1, damage plus 1, duration 120 seconds. This stimulant enables the user to better absorb damage and focuses the mind on the fight, improving the ability to hit. The effect wears off after a short time. Stim bonuses that affect the state that affect the same statistic do not stack. Okay, that's all I needed. Let's transit back. All right. Sith Trooper. Him I will talk to. Don't 
bother me. I'm here on official Seth business. Don't bother me. All right. This is the cantina. Let's head on in. Upper City Cantina. We have Christia Niklos. And Garuk. Hello there, youngster. You interested in buying the Pazak deck of an old man looking to get out of the gambling game? Just 50 credits and I'll sell you all my cards. I'll even throw in a free lesson to boot. It's a great deal, if you can afford it. Who are you? My name's Garuk. I used to be a card shark. One of the best Pazak players in the Outer Rim. But that was before I retired from the gambling life. You're giving up gambling? Why? Don't get me wrong. The game's been good to me over the years. I've traveled the span of the galaxy, from the core worlds to the farthest reaches of the Outer Rim. I've won countless fortunes, and lost countless more. But that was long ago, and things have changed. Gambling is a young man's game. That's why I'm looking to get out. My offer still stands. 50 credits get you my old Pazak deck and a free lesson. A great offer if you can afford it. I want to ask you some questions. Of course, of course. My mind isn't as sharp as it used to be. That's why I'm giving up the gambler's life. But I think I can still manage to answer some simple questions. I want some general information on Terrace. Mm, don't know what I can tell you that would be of any use. The upper city is nice enough, though it was better before the Sith showed up. But they don't bother an old guy like me much. Don't know much about the lower city. It's rough down beneath. I just stay up here where it's safe and mind my own business. I don't see much point in worrying about that kind of stuff now that I've given up the gambler's life. Is there anything else I can do for you? Of course, of course. Do you know anything about those Republic escape pods that crashed down in the Undercity? I spend my days here in the cantina, sipping ale and chatting with the folks who wander by. I don't have much use or care what goes on outside these walls. I don't see much point in worrying about that kind of... All right. Don't... I... That's why I... Sure, I'll buy your deck. Glad to see you're interested in the grand old game. The rules are pretty simple. Here, I'll load them up into your data pad so you can check them out Mini anytime games. you want. Good luck. I hope the game's as good to you as it was to me. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? I'd like a Pazak lesson. Before each Pazak match, you must select ten cards to form your side deck. Four of these cards will be randomly drawn to form your hand during the match. A basic Pazak deck has two of each card numbered plus one to plus five available to create a side deck. You will find other side deck cards as you play Knights of the Old Republic, with values ranging from plus or minus one to plus or minus six. Select ten cards to form your side deck now. Alright, so I have two plus ones, two plus twos, two plus threes, two plus fours, and two plus fives. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That's going to be the side deck, isn't it? Play. Are you sure you want to use this side deck? Okay. The object of the game is to have your face-up cards total higher than your opponent's hand without exceeding a total of 20. If a player's total is greater than 20 at the end of a turn, a bust, the opponent wins the bet. The player must... the set. A player must win three sets to win the match. The first player draws a card from the main deck and plays it face up to begin their turn. This is done automatically. I drew a one. This is your hand for the match. It is made up of four cards randomly drawn from the side deck you selected earlier. These cards have to last through all the sets of the match. After drawing a card, a player has the option of playing one of the cards from their hand. You can only play one card from your hand each turn by dragging it onto the board or by double-clicking it. Playing a card from the hand is optional. Tip. If your total is over 20 after your draw and you have a negative card in your hand, you can play it to bring your total back under 20. 
During your travels, you might find cards that can be played as either a negative or a positive value. These cards are very rare, but they give Pazak players a strong tactical advantage. A hand card must be declared as positive or negative before it is played. While it is in your hand, you can flip it back and forth, but once it is played, it cannot be changed. A player's turn is over when they select either End Turn or Stand. If you choose End Turn, you will draw another card on your next turn. If you choose Stand, you will not draw any more cards, and you cannot play any more cards from your hand until the next set of the match. You may now choose to play a card from your hand, to End Turn, or to Stand. Well, one, it's pretty basic, we're going to end our turn. Your opponent uses the same rules you do. Each turn they draw a card, and then they have the option to play a hand card to end turn or to stand. Seven, I'll end turn. Sixteen. I'll do a plus three and I'll stand. The set is tied. A match continues until one player has won three sets. Ties do not count. You are never given more hand cards in the match, so use the four cards you have carefully. Okay. 17. 20. If a player's total is exactly 20, they automatically stand. The opponent can continue to play until they stand or bust. You win the set. A match continues until one player has... Okay, I know that. That was a repeat. Damn. If a player has a total greater than 20 after their turn is over, it is bust. Their opponent automatically wins the set. The opponent wins the set. Yeah, I know. When you select End Turn, you will automatically draw another card at the start of your next turn. Remember, if your cards total more than 20 at the end of your turn, you will bust and your opponent wins the set. I'll stand. Feels risky to stand on a 16, but... Oh, there we go, he got 20 anyway. Devastating. You have been defeated. The match is over. That's okay, we weren't playing for any credits. Journal entry added, credits lost, 50. But remember, that's just the uh, deck I bought. Items received. Okay. Journal. Pazak rules. Basics. The object of the game is to have your face-up cards total higher than your opponent's hand without exceeding a total of 20. If a player's total is greater than 20 at the end of a turn, a bust, the opponent wins the set. A player must win three sets to win the match and collect the wager. Equipment. Bazak is played with a 40 card main deck made up of four of each card numbered 1 through 10, and a side deck of up to 10 cards with values ranging from minus 6 through plus 6. Rules of play. 1. Each player draws four random cards from their side deck to form their hand. These cards are available to the player for all the sets of the match. Each hand card can only be played once per match. 2. The first player draws a card from the main deck and plays it face up to begin their turn. 3. After drawing a card, a player has the option of playing one of the cards from their hand. Playing a card from the hand is optional. 4. Only one hand card can be played each turn. Remember, a player's four card hand must last through all sets of the match. 5. The player now has the option to stand or to end turn. A player who, st a player who stands cannot draw again or play any more cards from their hand during the set. When one player stands, the opponent can continue to take turns until they either stand or bust. 6. If a player chooses to end turn, they will automatically draw another card at the beginning of their next turn. After one player chooses to stand or end turn, the opponent draws a card to begin their next turn. 7. Players continue to alternate turns until both players choose to stand, or until one player ends a turn with a total greater than 20, a bust. Remember, you only, you, you only lose if you are over 20 at the end of your turn. A player can draw a card from the main deck that puts them over 20, then play a negative card from the hand that brings the total back under 20. 8. In the case of tie, another set must be played. No new cards from the side decks are drawn. 9. A player can never have more than 9 cards in play during one set. This includes cards from the hand as well as cards dealt from the deck. 
Once you have nine cards in play, you automatically stand. 10. A plus or minus card played from the side deck must be declared as a positive or negative when played. Once played, it cannot be changed. 11. The first player to win three sets wins the match and the wager. Alright. And items. We got... A Pazak deck. This is a standard Pazak deck, complete with side deck cards. Alright, anything else, Garuk? Back again? Is there something old Garuk can do for you? Or did you just come to chat with a lonely old man? Like a Pazak lesson? No, I'll be going now. No, of course. What was the last thing he said? That doesn't matter. No. Of course, of course, no sense in a youngster like you wasting your days away with an old man in a dingy bar. But if you ever want to chat, you know where to find me. Alright. Let's go play. Let's talk to Christia. Don't you just love watching the Kazakh players? All that strategy, all those credits. It's enough to make a girl get all flushed. Don't you just love... Alright, let's talk to Niklos. What do you want? Have you come here just to bother me, or do you wish to test yourself against the best Pazak player on Taurus? <laughs> Who are you? My name is Niklos. I'm the unofficial champion of the Pazak circuit here on Taurus. If you don't mind losing your wager, we could play a few hands. I want to ask you some questions. Questions? <laughs> I don't come here to answer questions. If you want to play Pazak, then let's play. If not, then quit crowding my gambling table. Goodbye. If you ever wish to test yourself against the best Pazak player on Taris, <laughs> you know where to find me. Alright, let's save. I saw you getting a Pazak lesson from that old fossil Garuk. Learning the rules of Pazak is easy. But actually playing the game is a much greater challenge. Normally, I wouldn't bother with a novice like you. But since Gerud was banned for hustling cards, I haven't been able to find a good game around here. Do you wish to play a hand? Let's play. I'm going to enjoy relieving you of your credits almost as much as I'm going to enjoy humiliating you. <laughs> How much do you wager? Maximum wager 40. Do it. Use that side deck. Thirteen. I'll risk it. I won the set. Pazak is not for everyone. It requires both nerve and skill. Perhaps you should practice before risking your credits against such a skilled player as myself. <laughs> Unless you like losing. Goodbye. If you ever wish to... Credits lost 40. Yeah, we're not gonna roll that way. Fuck you. I will time lord this. I saw you get north. I'm... 
try again. We'll stand on 18, that's fine. Fuck's sake. Game, you're killing me. <laughs> Something that's just, I mean, it's not purely luck based, but so entirely no. luck based I'm, bothers me. But. It's worth doing. It's a good way to get credits. Especially if you're not selling everything, because on difficult combat, there are... Particularly here on Taurus, there are lots of times we're actually going to need to use grenades and whatnot. The type of things you can normally make some credits selling off. Tide set. Alright, that's fine. You're at a distinct disadvantage always having to go first. That's another thing I notice. I can tie and burn a card to guarantee a tie. I guess that's okay. Yeah, I should think so. But luck is no substitute for skill in Pazak. If you are foolish enough to play me again, I won't repeat the mistake of underestimating you. Sorry, not interested right now. If you ever journal entry added, credits received 40. Okay, completed quests. So you have to win a game, and then it completes the Pazak rules quest. All right, we made the wager back. That's nice. You are luck. You think it was luck? Let's do it again. I'm going. Same 40 credit wager. Most players, you can't play limitless times. If you beat them enough times, they'll rage quit. Which makes sense. They didn't want to make Pazak into a literally infinite source of credits. I think Niklos, we can only play three times before he rage quits. Which I consider pretty fun. Really? All that drama and you just gave us both Nat 20s game? That was silly. stood on the 15 or not. Oh, fuck you. Fazaki. <laughs> if you have... <laughs> oh, boy. You are... I'm... Alright, 
fine. That's the thing, you just time lord until you get lucky. And we will, f we will find better cards later on, but it's hard. These, these early ones where you have absolutely no minuses, they're hard. We'll stay on the 19. That's fine. having to go first every hand. I mean, I get... I get Time Lord, but... In a, inside each match, having to go first every hand, every time, is such a huge disadvantage. He gets to see what my total to beat. He gets to see what the total he has to beat is every time. And I never get to play with good information about what his total is. Whatever. It's silly of me to be mad. Why you have to be mad? He's just game. Alright, he's at 20. out of hand cards, that's nice. For fuck's sake, game. Oh, you piece of shit. That was ridiculous. Bonafide. You are. Bonafide I'm fuckery under the guise of RNG. That's what that was. Another ten. That's what you do for him. Hey, I want a set. Now I just need to win two more. I'll stand on eighteen. Save my plus one. set. Good luck. I'll stand on 18. Alright. Yay! 
You were lucky to win the last one. If you ever... Alright, I think if we beat him one more time, he rages you wins. Were I'm going... It's either three or five. Ten here. Ugh. Every time I burn a card to get something and then it just gives it to him, oh, it makes me furious. Sixteen. Of course. It's five. If you have a it's okay. I can beat him two more times. You are. I'm gone. I guess that's a total of 200 credits. That actually makes sense. That's a sensibly even number. Oh, you piece of junk. I have been mad. It's just game. That needs to be my mantra for fucking Pazak during this playthrough. Should just have to do it one more time. You are... I'm going to. I think there is one player in the game who does play infinite matches. You can just play him over and over and over and over again for credits. By, th if I remember right, I, I think he's on Manon. It's pretty late game in the order I go in, and by the time we get there, we really don't need the credits, so I only do the people who, like, quit or give extra dialogue or story stuff and whatnot as you continue playing them. I think we only need to beat Niklos one more time. I don't think it's going to be this time. I had a bad feeling about that draw. If you I also can't remember if it's a net five wins you are, that sets him off or a total of five wins. But either way, it's gonna be a net five wins. Sweet, he stood on 18. I will now do myself.
Stand on eighteen. And I'll stand on eighteen again. I do not lose at Pazak very often, but you've made a habit of beating me. I think it is obvious what that means. You cheat! You can't make an accusation like that without proof. It's not my fault you're bad at Pazak. Don't be a sore loser, I just want to ask you some questions. Number one. I have not been able to figure out how, but I know you're cheating. I'm simply too good to lose this often, and I refuse to play Pazak with a cheater. You can leave now, cheater. I won't be wasting any more time with you. All right. I do not lose. It's not my fault you're bad at Pazog. I have no... You can... I do not lose. Don't be a sore loser. I just want to ask you some questions. You cheat me out of my hard-earned credits. And you expect me to answer your questions? You can leave now. All right. That's it. So now we can talk to this Christian gal. I saw your match against Nikos. He doesn't lose very often. I bet you could make a lot of credits as a professional Kazak player. You know, you're my kind of guy, rich and handsome, just the way I like them. Why don't we slip away to the tap room together? The bartender can mix us up something special for only 20 credits. If you play your cards right, Kazak might not be the only game you get lucky at tonight. 20 credits? That seems expensive for a couple of drinks. Well, I'm used to the finer things in life. I'm not about to lower my standards for any man. So how about it? You want me to get those drinks for us? We all know how s we all know these things always turn out poorly. Sorry, not interested. What's the matter, you shy? Suit yourself. I'll be here if you change your mind. Just waiting for a nice, rich Pazak player to come along. All right. Let's talk to Sarna. Hi there. I haven't seen you around before. Of course, they don't give us Sith officers from the military base much time off. You're from the military base? You don't look like one of the Sith. I'm off duty right now, so I'm not in uniform. My name is Sana, junior officer first class with the Sith Occupation Force. Nice to meet you, Sarna. I'm Doug Tetra. I'm actually a little surprised you're talking to me at all. Most of the people here on Taris can't stand us Sith. It can make this job pretty lonely. Persuade. You're just doing your job, right? I don't hold that against you. It's true, but people don't appreciate what we've done for them. We could have slapped a curfew on this whole planet, but we didn't. You know, it's like everyone on this backwater planet is in a permanent bad mood. Don't they know we have to make the best of things? You've got a pretty positive attitude. Exactly, it's all about attitude. I didn't ask to be assigned to this backwater planet, but I try to make the best of it. It's pretty easy to get depressed on an assignment like this, but we do what we can to keep our spirits up. You need to blow off steam once in a while. That's true. It's nice to meet someone who understands what I'm going through. It's good to talk about this stuff. It's pretty lonely at the military base. I have to get going soon. I've got a shift at the military base, but some of us junior Sith officers are having a party tonight to blow off some steam. I'd really like to see you again. Why don't you drop by the party? I'll show you where it is on your map. Sounds good. I'll be there. Don't be late. We're starting right after our ship's end. Most of us won't even be going back to the base to lock up our uniforms. I look forward to seeing you there. Journal entry added. This is a good thing, I assure you. Active quests. Search for Bastila. You've been invited to a party being given by one of the off-duty Sith officers. Going there might be risky, but it could also get you a step closer to finding Bastila. Invited to a party. You've been invited to a party by one of the Sith. 
According to the directions on your data pad, they're getting together at an apartment on the east side of the north upper city. Mm-hmm. Terrace citizen. Oh, come on. You know, it's bad enough the Sith conquered this planet, but do they have to come in here, relax, and rub their presence on our faces? Well, that quarantine must be tough in the off world they're stuck here. You should try and make the best of it and order yourself some Teresian ale. It'll take away some of the sting. I wish the off duty Sith would stop coming in here for drinks. I mean, scouring the inner city looking for the Republic escape pods and the reek of the sewers. You know, it's bad enough the Sith conquered this planet. But do they have to come in here? Well, you know, that quarantine must be tough when you off while they're stuck here. You should try and make the best. I don't know what the guys in here find so attractive about those Twi'leks. Look at them. They're dressed like little Twi dirty space wenches. I always thought it was Twi'lek. Everyone's worried the Sith will come in here and shut this place down. Can you imagine how dull it would be if we didn't have any music on Terrace? <sighs> Who dresses you? you? Look like you crawled up here from the lower city. Oh well, I guess we can't all have style. Isn't this band great? They can't leave Terrace because of the Sith quarantine, so they've been playing here every night. Talk about a good break for us. <sighs> I don't know what the guys in here find so- I heard the Sith sent a bunch of patrols to the Undercity. They probably went to loot the crash sites of those Republic escape pods that went down there. Yeah, that lower city is nothing but a slum. If the Sith want to win us Terizians over, they should clean the gangs out of there. You like Pazak? I used to watch it all the time when Gelrub was playing here. He had some great matches against Niklos, until they banned him for cheating. Have you gone into the music room in the back? Yeah, I don't care much for the band, but those dancing Twi'leks are something else, I'm telling you now. I heard the Sith sent a bunch of patrols to the Undercity. It's a good thing a few of the Sith come in here to relax when they're off duty. It should keep them from closing this cantina down. You aren't from Terrace, are you? Do yourself a favor and stay away from the Teresian Ale. It packs more kick than most off-worlders can handle. Nice outfit. I've seen outcasts in the Undercity who dress better than you. It's a good thing a few of the Sith come in here to relax when they're off-duty. That should keep them- You like Pazak? I used to watch it all the time when Gelrug was playing here. Nice outfit. I've seen outcasts in the Undercity who do- It's a good thing a few of the Sith come in here to relax when they're off-duty. Starting to get a lot of repetition. I'm surprised the Sith haven't done anything to try to bring in Davik. After all, everyone knows he's the crime lord who runs this planet. Mm. The Sith are hunting for any Republic soldiers who escaped the battle overhead. They even sent a patrol into the Undercity to look for survivors. Look at Niklos sitting over there with his Pazak deck. I used to play, you know. But I wasn't very good. I finally sold my deck and gave it up. Oh, there's too many people in this cantina since they added the music room in the back. I come here to relax, not to fight with crowds. I'm surprised the Sith haven't done anything to try to bring in death. Nice outfit. I've seen outcasts in the Undercity. Teresian Noble. What? Why are you speaking to me? Can't you tell from my clothing that I'm of the nobility? Get away from me. I can't be seen talking with a common rabble. It wouldn't be proper for a man of my stand. What? Get away. All right. He's a douchebag. Let's go to the back room first. It's a good thing a few of the Sith come in here to relax when they're off duty. Now that quarantine must be tough when you off world are stuck here. You should try and make the best of it and order yourself some Teresian ale. It'll take away some of the sting. I'm sorry, I'm too busy to talk. I've got to get these drink orders to the customers. I'm sorry, I'm too busy to talk. I've got to get these drink orders to the customers. Gonna Laban. Where did you get those clothes? A trash compactor in the lower city? And where are those drinks we ordered? Sorry, I'm not your waiter. Who are you and why are you bossing me around? Order? I have no clue what you're talking about. Number two. Careful what you say. I get the feeling this spoiled brat can cause us more trouble than she's worth. Why is the help here so incompetent? One word from Daddy, and I could get you fired. Shut up, you spoiled brat. It's good to be... It's actually best to be mean to her, and you don't get dark side points for it. How dare you speak to me like that? Daddy's going to hear about this. Noble youth. Are you our waiter? Ghana's buying tonight. Talk to her to get my order. Do I know you? No? Then why are you speaking to me? Why do you poor folk always smell so funny? Are you our waiter? 
Morgana's bike. This Teresian ale is fantastic. We should have conquered this planet ages ago. This cantina isn't the fanciest joint I've ever been in, but it's a good place to unwind after a hard shift at the military base. Taurus isn't such a bad place. I've been stationed in worse places than this during my commission. This Teresian ale is fantastic. We should have conquered this. Let me enjoy my drink in peace. And I won't have to run you in for questioning. If you're here to complain about the quarantine, don't waste your breath. There's nothing I can do about it. I just follow the orders I'm given. I'm not here to chat. I just finished a long shift at the military base, and now I'm just looking to relax. Let me enjoy my drink in peace. Right. And I won't have to run you in for questions. The south room is the dual ring. Let's try the north room first. Jürgen. No hard feelings, my good man, but I can't really talk with you right now. It's difficult enough to draw the interest of the ladies in this establishment as it is. Surely you understand what I'm talking about. I'd guess you've experienced many lonely evenings. Something I'm hoping to avoid tonight. No hard feelings, sure. I wish the off-duty Sith would stop coming in here for drinks. Music room oh, scouring under <laughs> Nice outfit. You steal those clothes from a bum in the lower city? Oh well, guess you don't have to have good taste in clothes to come and enjoy the music. The band's pretty good, but I'm getting a little sick of them. If it wasn't for the Sith quarantine, maybe we could get somebody new in here to play. Check out those Twi'lek dancers. I don't know who designed their outfits, but that man deserves a raise. Well, people complain, but things under the Sith really aren't so bad. I'm sure we can't leave the planet, but we're still allowed to come here and listen to the music. <laughs> nice outfit. You steal those clothes from a bum. The musician is too busy playing to pay any attention to you. The musician is too busy playing to pay any attention to you. Isn't this band great? They can't leave Terrace because of the Sith quarantine, so they've been playing here every night. Talk about a good break for us. I wish the off-duty Sith would stop coming All right. in here for drinks. That just leaves the dual ring, which we'll definitely check out now. I can't believe we couldn't get arena tickets for this match! Now we'll have to watch the duel on the view screen. Who cares? It's Duncan and Gurlon fighting. It's not like we're gonna miss anything good. Shh, they're about to start, so quit complaining and just watch the view screen. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the dueling ring. Here, two combatants will battle for your viewing and gambling enjoyment. Now, I hope all your bets are down because we're ready to roll. In this corner, I give you Gurlon Twofinger. And over here, looking to climb the ranks yet again, is the ever-persistent Deadeye Duncan. Nobody's great surprise, Jedi is down again. Ooh. Don't worry, folks, he's just unconscious. As usual, our medics will have him up and about in a bit. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? So I give you the winner, Gurlon Twofinger. All right, so, the duel ring. Obviously, we can enter and do some dueling. Um... There are a total of six duels. Uh, I'm gonna do the first three now. We'll need to come back after we have better gear to have any shot of winning the final three. So, just so you understand where I'm at and what's going on. Arena monitor. There's no action in the duel ring right now, so the monitor is blank. Duel spectator. It's good to see Marl still around after all these years. He proves this isn't just a young man's game. I love watching ice in the ring. Is there anything more exciting than a woman who's armed and dangerous? Gerlon used to be one of the best in the game. Now he's barely better than old Dead-Eye Duncan. That twitch is an animal. 
You couldn't pay me enough to get into the ring with him. It's good to see Marl still. All right, he's repeating himself now. I love watching Ice fight. She proves this isn't just a man's game. Twitch is my favorite. He's wild. Marl's been around forever. I wonder if he ever thinks about retiring. Why doesn't Duncan just give the sport up? He's terrible. I love watching. All right. Here's Twitch. Blast away. Open fire. Shoot, kill, name. What the hell are you talking about? Ready, aim, fire. Is your trigger finger as itchy as mine? Okay, goodbye then. Shoot first, shoot last. Party with me, we'll have a blast. Girl on two fingers. I haven't seen you around here before. You looking to step into the duel ring? Or did you just come to watch? Duel ring? What are you talking about? What? Why are you here if you don't even know what the dueling ring is? I don't have time to answer your questions. I need to stay focused for my next match. Maybe Azure can help you out. He's the hut over there in the corner. He arranges all the duels. You seem to be hanging around here an awful lot. You actually going to step into the duel ring sometime? Or are you just here to watch? I want to step into the ring. Good to see some new blood in the fight game. Things have gotten pretty stale around here lately. If you're serious about this, go talk to Azure the Hut. He's the duel organizer. He'll probably start a rookie like you out against Duncan. You seem to be... I want to ask you some questions. I don't have time to... All right. Dead Eye Duncan. What are you looking at, fresh meat? You want a piece of me? You want to step in the dueling chambers with me? Who are you? I'm Dead Eye Duncan, the number five ranked duelist in this cantina. You must have seen me in the dueling chambers, right? Dueling chambers? You know, the dueling chambers. Two people in combat, loser gets carried out unconscious on a stretcher. It's the only reason people come into this part of the cantina. Look, I'm the number five ranked duelist around here. I don't have time to explain all this. Go talk to the duel organizer if you're interested. He's that hut over there in the corner. You're the number five ranked duelist? Out of how many? Uh, five. But it's an elite group, okay? It's not like just anyone can step into the dueling chamber. Well, actually, anyone can. But not many do. You don't look so tough. I think I could beat you in a duel. Big talk. Go speak with the hut in the corner to back it up. He's the duel organizer. I'll look forward to our match. Fresh meat is just what I need to end my losing streak. Marl. Hello there, Offworld. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Marl. I'm one of the duelists here at the cantina. I was wondering when you'd get around to talking to me. Do I know you? No, we've never met. It's just that most people who come here to watch the duels are bored nobles, looking for a little excitement in their drab lives. But you're different. You look like you know a thing or two about combat. I'm guessing you didn't come here to sit on the sidelines and watch a duel. Are you looking for a match? Tell me more about these duels. The duels themselves are simple enough. Two combatants armed with stun pistols enter the ring. One walks out a winner. The other is carried out unconscious on a stretcher. If you're interested in setting up a match, or if you want to place a wager, just go speak to Adger. He's that hut over in the corner. He'll make all the arrangements. I want to ask you some questions. My area of expertise is pretty much limited to the dueling ring and the other combatants here at the cantina. But I'll try to answer any questions you might have. I want to ask you about the duelists here. I just want some general information on Terrace. I can only tell you what is recorded in the basic visitor guides. The Upper City is a beautiful destination where intergalactic travelers can find all their basic needs. If you're looking for excitement, the duel rings here are your best bet. Stay out of the Lower City. It's nothing but a gang-ridden slum. Is there anything else you want to know? Do you know anything about the crashed Republic escape pods? Only what I heard from the news reports which are all censored by the Sith. Some pods crashed into the Undercity. Anyone caught harboring survivors will be arrested and executed. Really, I, I don't think it's any of my business. The Sith want to call themselves rulers of Taurus? It's fine by me, just so long as they don't shut the duel ring down. I want to ask you about the duelists here. You've come to the right man. I've been dueling here for nearly 20 years, and I remember every duelist who's been through this cantina. Of course, there are only five of us left now. Duncan, Gurlon, Ice, Twitch, and me. Bendak's Starkiller comes in once in a while, but he's retired now. 
Tell me about Duncan. Duncan? Worst duelist ever. His nickname is Deadeye because he fights like he's blind. I wouldn't worry about him. Tell me about Gerlon. Gerlon used to be pretty good before the accident. His blaster overheated during a match and exploded. One in a million occurrence. Paralyzed three fingers on his right hand. They call him Gerlon Two Fingers now. He hasn't been the same since the accident. But he's still out here trying to earn a living. That's why I never fight with blasters. Tell me about Ice. Ice? Eh, she's not much for personality, but she's a hell of a fighter. Confident, steady, popular with the crowd, too. If you go up against her, you know you're in for a tough match. Tell me about yourself. Me? Well, I've seen my share of battles. My best years are gone. But I can still hold my own against anyone in here. Except maybe Twitch. Tell me about Twitch. Twitch? I think that Rodian is completely crazy. But he's very, very good despite his insanity. Or well, maybe because of it. Even I can't beat him. Tell me about Bendak Starkiller. What can I say? Bendak was a legend. Never lost a match his entire career. But he was bloodthirsty as an Iridorian battle rager. Never liked having to face the same opponent twice. Got so he wouldn't battle anyone unless it was a death match. When they made death matches illegal, he went into retirement. He still hangs around here sometimes. Bendak's the best there ever was, plain and simple. Even now, I'd bet that anyone who steps into the ring with him wouldn't make it out alive. I want to ask something else. My area. Tell me more about these duels. The duels them. If you're. Goodbye. Goodbye, stranger. Maybe we'll talk again later. Yeah, that leaves Ice and Adger. We'll talk to Ice right quick. I know what you're going to say. I'm so beautiful, I'm so attractive. How can someone who looks so hot with a weapon in her hand be called Ice? Well, I've heard it all before. I'm here to take care of business in the dueling ring, not to have some slack-jawed, goggled-eyed man slobber all over me. So back off. Dueling ring? What are you talking about? You don't know about the dueling ring? This is unbelievable. Then why are you even here? Wait, never mind. I don't really care. You know what? I'm not one for friendly chit-chat, so I'm just going to deliver the cold, hard facts. I don't want to waste any more time with you. Wow, that was cold. Now you know why they call me Ice. If you're looking for a match, go talk to Azure. He's that big hut over there in the corner. Otherwise, just go away. All right. Well, let's talk to Azure then. Wait, what's this? First aid. Med pack. Nice. Okay. All right, Adger, what's up? I'm sorry, human. The betting window's closed. No more fights right now. People are sick of seeing the same duelists all the time. It's bad for business. Unless... My name is Adger. I organize all the duels here. We need a new face in the dueling game, human. Maybe you want to step into the duel ring? It can be a highly profitable venture. What are you talking about? I might be interested what's in this for me. I just want to ask you some questions. Questions? Bah! Questions don't make me money. But if you want to fight, it could it would could be very profitable for both of us. You interested? What are you talking about? I can arrange for you to fight in the duel ring. If you win, you get the standard contract, 10% of all wagers. And don't worry, nobody dies in the duel ring anymore. Death matches are illegal now. Most fighters in the duel ring use fiber blades or stun sticks because the ring's pretty small. But a few of the duelists use blasters. Use whichever you prefer. Fibro blades and blasters, and nobody ever dies. How come I get the feeling you're trying to take us for a ride? The dual ring has energy suppressor fields to make sure nobody dies. Weapons are limited, so they hurt but don't kill. And we've got a medic droid in case of serious injuries. Are you interested? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it, but I want more than 10%. Sorry, I'm not interested. This fails no matter what. It's a literally impossible persuade check, so I'll just go with option one. Good, new blood for the ring. 
but you need a nickname like Ice or Deadeye or Twitch. Good nicknames make people bet more. Hmm, what's a good name for you? You're an off-world. You're new here. People won't recognize you. I know. From now on in the duel ring, you'll be the mysterious stranger. The mysterious stranger. I like it. That's a terrible name. My name is Doug Tetra. I think that sounds better than a nickname. Option one. I like the mysterious stranger. The mysterious stranger is a perfect name for you. You've got no past, no history. It makes you seem like you have some big, dark secret. People like that. It makes them bet more. This is for the best. We could use those credits from these duels, but using your real name is too risky. The Sith might have come across a crew manifest back on the Ender's You ready for a duel now? You want to step into the ring right away? I'll set you up with Deadeye Duncan to start. I'll tell you the rules if you're ready. I'm not ready for the match yet. I'm not ready? You look ready to me. Why are you here if you don't want to fight? You don't get paid if you don't fight. Come on, are you sure you don't want to step into the ring? I just want to say, because I think everybody's dialogue changes at every stage of progression. I want to ask you some questions. Ba questions? Bah, I don't have time for questions. They don't make me any credits. I want you to fight, not to ask questions. So are you ready to step into the ring? Goodbye. I have big plans for you next match, tiny human. You come back when you want to fight. Journal entry added. Oh yeah, I picked up a med pack. The duel ring. You've agreed to join the terrorist dueling circuit. The non-lethal duels seem quite popular with the spectators, and you sense the chance for substantial profit. Whenever you want a duel, all you have to do is speak to Adger. What are you looking at, fresh m Big talk. Okay. Yeah, nothing yet, so we'll go ahead and fight Duncan. Ah, mysterious stranger. I knew you'd be back. They all come back. You've come for a duel, right? I can set up a match and we'll make some money, yes? You get 10% of the purse if you win. You want to step into the ring now? Are you ready to prove yourself against the best duelists on Terrace? I'm ready for a duel. Yes, you fight and people bet and I make money. It's all good. Only one rule, nobody dies. Your opponent goes down, you don't finish them off. Death matches are illegal now. You knew it this, so I'll start you off easy. You get to fight Deadeye Duncan. Are you ready to go into the ring now? Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. You've seen him lose night after night after night, but this time, he's after fresh meat. In this corner, I give you Deadeye Duncan! And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the Taris dueling scene, emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name, the Mysterious Stranger! There's Duncan. We can just rapid shot him. It'll go quickly. It's over! The fight is over! The mysterious stranger has won! But really, are any of us surprised? Deadeye losing is in huge. You have to do better than that to impress us, stranger!
Journal entry added. 55 XP. Duel Ring. Terrace, you've claimed your first victory in the Dueling Ring by defeating Deadeye Duncan. Unfortunately, Duncan's lack of ability is legendary, so hardly anyone is impressed by your victory. I recognize you. You're that new duelist everyone's talking about. The mysterious stranger. Congratulations on your first win. Of course, you beat Duncan, so it's nothing to get too excited about. Gerlon used to be one of... You're not so hot, stranger. Everybody beats Duncan. Hey, you're one of the duelists. The one they call the mysterious stranger. Sure, I know you. I couldn't believe Duncan's last match. How could he lose to a raw rookie? No disrespect, of course. Duncan's so pathetic. Twitch is my favorite. Are you completely insane? His dialogue is the same. What do you want? Oh, let me guess. You beat me in the dueling ring, and now you're gonna rub it in my face. Yeah, well, I'm used to it. So pardon me if I ignore your gloating. I wanna ask you some questions. Questions? I don't have to answer your questions just because you beat me in the ring. Look, I admit it, you're better than me. Everyone's better than me. A blindfolded, one-legged tack with a rusty knife could probably beat me, okay? Is that what you wanted to hear? You satisfied yet? Are you happy now that you've taken the last shred of dignity I have? Yeah, I'm happy now. Uh, I'll just be going now. Oh, well, okay. Goodbye, then. Gerlon? I saw your match against Duncan. Not bad for a rookie. But Deadeye's a joke. Even after I lost the use of my fingers, I can still beat him. Go talk to Azure, the duel organizer, if you want to step up to the big leagues. I'll show you what it's like to fight a real duelist. Oh, come on. Nice. What do you want? Wait, let me guess. Now that you're a duelist, you figure we have something in common. Something to chat about, right? Wrong. Just because we're both duelists doesn't mean we're suddenly friends. So give me some space, stranger. I've got nothing more to say to you. And Marl, the friendly one. I see you got your feet wet in the duel ring. Not bad. You've got real talent, kid. Stick with it and you'll go places. I'm looking for a match. If you're interested in setting up a map. Goodbye. Goodbye, stranger. All right. Talk to Adger. Good fight, good fight. People like you, mysterious stranger. They bet a lot when you fight. It makes me happy and rich. I always pay my debts. You won, so you get paid. 10% of the purse, that was the deal. Here's your credits. You come see me when you're ready to fight again. Credits received, 100. Lovely. You fought well last time. People like you, stranger. They bet lots on your last fight. There'll be more on your next fight. You get 10%, same as always. I'm ready for a duel. You handled Duncan pretty well. I think you're ready to fight Gurlon two fingers. Just remember, Gurlon uses blasters in the ring sometimes. You ready to step into the arena? Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. In this corner, one of the greats, a man so tough, even a disfiguring injury couldn't end his career. <laughs> I give you Gerlon Two Fingers. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the Terrace dueling scene, emerging. Same idea. We should still be able to essentially hand. He's definitely tougher than this. Got him. It's over! The fight is over! The mysterious...
stranger has won. Gerlach losing to a rookie. Is this a sign that his injuries have finally caught up with him? Or is the mysterious stranger for real? Only time will tell. Journal entry added, 80 experience received. The Duel Ring. Girl on Two Fingers has fallen before you in battle, gaining you some measure of respect among aficionados of the sport, though you are still ranked far below the top ranked duelists. We're gonna heal, need to heal up before our next fight. I'm gonna do Ice, and she's probably the last one I'm gonna do. I recognize you. I wish Bendix Starkiller would get back into the fight game. None of these duelists here can measure up to his legend. Gerlon used to be one of the... Marl's been around for... What do you want? Oh, let me get... Wow, you sure have a bad attitude. Gee, I wonder why. Couldn't have anything to do with being the worst duelist on Terrace, could it? Even a rookie like you got the better of me. Look, I admit it, you're better. Is that what you want? Yeah, I'm happy now. Slat. You beat me fair and square, stranger. But if I still had the use of my fingers, you wouldn't have won. Back before my injury, I would have mopped the ring up with you. What do you want? Wrong. I see you got your feet wet and... All right. Goodbye, stranger. Talk to Azure. 200 credits. Alright, we can just use Rapid Transit to heal immediately. Oh, Rapid Transit's unavailable. Alright, fine. set up another fight, right? The ring is in your blood now, like a virus. You need to hear the cheers of the crowd. You need the rush of battle. You need to fight again. I, I am gonna go heal up. Ice is tough. Like, ice is about the max you can handle here at the beginning. Bendix Starkiller. Well, hi. Leave me alone. I'm not giving out any auto prints to my fans today. Auto prints? What are you talking about? What? You don't recognize me? I'm Bendix Starkiller, the most famous blaster slinger on Taurus. Over 100 duels without a loss. Every one of them a death match. You don't look so tough. Maybe you'll take me on. How come you don't hang around with the other duelists? I'm retired now. Once death matches became illegal, I just got bored with the game. I got no interest in using stun blasters. There was nobody left to challenge me anyway. I've seen you in the dueling ring, but you haven't impressed me. Now, if you could beat all these other pretenders, that might get my attention. I want to ask you some questions. Since I'm not going to answer them, you'd just be wasting your breath. So, move along before people see us talking and think I'm signing auto prints today. I don't want to be mobbed. I'll be going now. Off with you then. I'm done with this conversation anyway. All right, out to the upper city south. Now we should be able to return to the hideout. Which has the delightful effect of auto-healing us before we transit back. Now I should be able to pop right back into the cantina. And we can go do one more duel with ice. And this episode has extended nearly 90 minutes. You know, I try to finish an area. I'm ready for a duel. I think you're ready to go against ice, human. She's tough, but so are you. There will be lots of action on this fight. A huge purse. You ready? Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special over in this corner. 
A woman with steel on her bones and ice water in her veins. She's cold and quick as death itself. You know her. You love her. Ice. And in the other corner, a rising star taking that first step into the big leagues. I give you the mysterious stranger. All right, so for her, we just want to toss frag grenades. Victory. It's over! The fight is... Oh, ice is knocked out cold! Looks like we have a rising star in the mysterious stranger, folks. But how high can this star soar? You'll just have to watch and see. Journal entry added. 105 experience gained. With your victory over ice, people are beginning to notice your accomplishments in the ring. If you continue to climb the ranks, a championship match is inevitable. I love watching ice. Twitch is my fi- You beat ice! I've been trying to beat her for years and you do it just like that! <laughs> I can't believe how lucky you are. That's right, I said lucky. Lucky to be born with the kind of talent I spent a lifetime trying to build. It isn't fair, I tell you. You beat ice. That Fair long. You beat me fair and square. Talk to ice. I've never been one to shy away from the cold, hard truth. So I'll just come right out and say it. I can't compete with the likes of you, stranger. I know when I'm overmatched. You're good. Very good. But you're wrong if you think that means I'm suddenly going to warm up to you. Truth is, I really don't have anything more to say. So you might as well move on. Pretty impressive, stranger. Ice is no pushover. People are starting to take notice of you. They say you're the best thing to come along since Twitch stepped into the ring. But if you're going to keep climbing the ranks, then I guess I'm next on your hit list, kid. I'm looking forward to it. Let's step into the ring, then. You don't waste any time, do you? Go talk to Adger. He'll set the match up. All right. Talk to Adger. All right, 300 credits. And like I said, that's all we can handle for now. We will come back to deal with Marl, Twitch, and Bendek after we get some, uh... After we get some better gear. Back again? You're starting to bore me. I don't come here to talk. I come to watch the duels and see if there's anyone worthy of stepping into the ring with me. I'll step into the ring with you, Bendak. Sorry. I don't waste my time with no names. You have to prove yourself before you get a shot at me. I'm the real deal kid. 100 death matches without a loss. But if you can knock off all these other pretenders in the duel ring, I might consider coming out of retirement to face you in one last death match. I'll be back as soon as I beat all these other duelists. Good luck with that, kid. You're gonna need it. <laughs> you sure you want to get involved in this? Seems a bit pointless to me. Up to you. All right. Let's transit back again. Get that sweet free healing. And that's going to do it for this episode of Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my content, I hope you will give the video a like and consider subbing to the channel. If you want to discuss this or any of my content, the best place is my Discord server. That link is in the video description. And if you want to support me or the channel, apart from liking and subscribing, the best way is through my Patreon page. That link is also in the video description. Patreon supporters get to nominate and vote for the games they would like to see played on the channel. Um, Knights of the Old Republic is the current Patreon chosen game. Once a game is selected, I play it all the way through to the end, and then I have the supporters pick another one. Pretty straightforward. If you want to get involved, you have that option. Uh, regardless, thank you so much for watching. Again, I really appreciate your time and attention. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.